KY3 News starts now. I'm encouraging people to go be the lone wolf and, and kill Secret Service men and FBI agents. That, you know, that can't be tolerated. An arrest tied to terror threats rocks Buffalo, Missouri. Good evening, I'm Steve Grant. I'm Lisa Rose. 38-year-old Safiya Yassin is accused of threatening to kill U.S. government agents and military members, all while sympathizing with ISIS. Coming 3's Drew Douglas is live in Buffalo tonight, a town that's still in shock. Drew? Yes, Steve and Lisa, they're trying to wrap their heads around the idea of a resident of Buffalo being accused of expressing support for ISIS and advocating for violence on Twitter. As you can imagine, for this small town, that's big news. Lunchtime at Hip Pocket Pizza in Buffalo. Well, I just never thought that a little bitty town like this would have anything to worry about. The subject of chatter here today, the FBI raid of a woman accused of tweeting support for ISIS. I'm encouraging people to go be the lone wolf and, and kill Secret Service men and FBI agents. That, you know, that can't be tolerated. When the news hit that there is FBI in the town, it's like, what for? You know, it's really surprising. Many folks here are still trying to figure out what to make of it. It's here. I think we as a nation need to wake up and uh, and get back to you know putting God first and everything and getting uh, more diligence. For some, it's scary. Right now, what worries me the most is if she actually was connected with them. But they're glad the FBI was on top of the situation. I don't think the people in Buffalo would be are scared by this. I think they're disappointed. And earlier today, when we went to the home that the FBI had raided yesterday, the front door was boarded up, but it still seemed like there may be some people in there. We were hoping to talk to those folks and see if we could maybe tell their side of the story, but we got no response. Live in Buffalo, Missouri, Drew Douglas, KY3 News. Sophia Yassin has lived in the Ozarks for years, so there's a chance you have encountered her. KY3, Linda Russell has more on the places that the suspected ISIS supporter has lived and spoke with one woman who thought that she knew Sophia. Linda? Well, during her 10 years in the Ozarks, Sophia Yassin lived in five different places, first in Aurora, then Springfield twice, Stratford, Bolivar, and where she was arrested this week in Buffalo. Now, one woman we spoke with today, Annette Brandenburg, says Sophia Yassin reached out to her on Facebook, interested in joining a support group for parents of children with autism. Annette says Sophia kept in touch for a few months, but she hasn't seen her in over a year and was shocked by the news. Seeing Safiya Yassin's mugshot and the FBI swarming the house where she lived was overwhelming for Annette Brandenburg. I, I cried because I, I just remember her being a lovely person who loved her children very dearly. And um, as a mother myself, I feel a lot of compassion for her children. Annette knew the woman accused of posting ISIS propaganda and threats against FBI agents and military personnel as a mother of two with a special needs son. I remember Sophia throwing herself wholeheartedly into helping me organize our, our children's party. And she's a very giving, caring, sweet person. She says Sophia was passionate about everything she believed in. Chemtrails, vaccines, um, issues related to autism, Monsanto. I mean, whatever she got involved in or thought about, it, it, she expressed that very passionately. Annette recalls her Facebook posts and messages were often rants. The content and the tone was very intense and um, a little bit extreme. As a grad student pursuing a career in mental health, Annette admits she did have concerns for Sophia's mental well-being. I would read some of the rants on Facebook and she would send me personal messages and I would be a little troubled by them. She says Sophia spoke about political issues in her home country in the Middle East, but never about Islam or ISIS. And if the FBI allegations are true, Annette wonders where it all went wrong. Sophia disappeared and we just never her, haven't heard from her in a, a long time and then we hear this so it's disturbing of course if Sophia did post the threats and the ISIS propaganda the FBI says she does did Annette hopes that she is held accountable but she also thinks Sophia needs mental help
Linda Russell tonight. Thanks, Linda. Greene County prosecutor says no criminal charges will be filed in a Springfield mortuary case because there was no criminal intent. This all started back in 2014 when a whistleblower reported the remains of three people were sent to the wrong grave sites. Kelly Boston, Carly Boston, worked at Springfield Mortuary and claimed the owner orchestrated a cover-up. Boston said that Brian Simmons paid her and two other employees to cremate the wrong body. DNA testing confirmed that mix-up. Then in September, Springfield Mortuary told us it was doing all it could to correct the situation once those errors came to light. Police now believe the woman shot in downtown Springfield overnight was targeted. They say she was hit in the leg standing outside the Gilloy's Theater around 1 o'clock this morning. Police are examining surveillance video right now. They're not sharing that video with us, but they say it will help them get a clearer picture of the shooter. There was a concert at the Gilloy's followed by an after party that police say may be connected to this shooting. They do not know that for sure. We will keep you posted as we learn it, that information. New at 6, a Springfield man gets probation but no jail time for his part in a deadly crash one year ago. Police investigators say Dylan Meyer was drunk and going almost 100 miles an hour when he crashed into a car driven by Kelly Williams near Battlefield and Campbell. Meyer entered an Alford plea to involuntary manslaughter charges last fall. A man from Ava is dead after his car overturned off the side of a highway C just north of, south of Norwood. 40-year-old Eric Hambleton was thrown from the wreckage. And a military science faculty member at MSU was killed in a chain reaction crash on I-44 west of Springfield. Authorities say that Captain Aaron Edom got out last night to help another motorist when a semi clipped Edom's car and it hit him. Edom was a combat veteran and a recipient of the Purple Heart and Bronze Star. A Branson, Missouri man's jailed and charged with having sex with two teenage girls in his high school band. Kyle Smith resigned from Harrison High School District, or the Harrison School District, I should say, after investigators revealed he was under investigation. According to court documents, a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old both told police they had sex with Smith at his home in Branson. Smith has pleaded not guilty and will be back in court on Monday. The trial date's set now for the man accused of shooting a Springfield police officer in the head last year. Joshua Haygood will go to trial August 22nd. He's accused of shooting Officer Aaron Pearson in the face back in January of 2014, 2015. The judge in the case also denied Haygood's attempts to throw out evidence, including videotaped interviews with Haygood following his arrest. Officer Pearson continues to recover but had to leave the police force because of his injuries. Deputies are investigating a break-in at what used to be the Sparta police station. It's been closed since the town council suspended police operations after Sparta's chief and other officers resigned. The sheriff says some weapons, ammo, and Sparta uniforms are missing. Deputies are still going through the inventory. Sparta officials are considering contracting for law enforcement from the Christian County Sheriff. Well, strong winds made uh, things difficult for fire crews in Searcy County, Arkansas, for uh, a very long day. Fire broke out at the Royal Oak Charcoal Plant near Leslie late last night. The Sheriff's Department says a big pile of lumber was still burning at the grounds. Several agencies had to team up together to help put the flames out. And then look at this. You can see the wind stirring up a little smoke NATO mm -hmm. of sorts. There it is. That's something, isn't it? it? You know, in the flames there. Well, those strong winds tapered off, and we definitely warmed up. Oh, luckily. Oh, yes. And those warmer temperatures look to be sticking around for a while. Chief Meteorologist Ron Hurst joins us with tonight's first forecast. How'd you like that smoke NATO or fire NATO? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, those uh, fire NATOs that we had on at 5 o'clock, those things were really dangerous. I mean, those things can take off and cause that fire to be spread very rapidly, even behind the line of firefighters. So that's something I have to keep an eye on. Now, today, beautiful day. Gorgeous sunset over uh, Lake of the Ozarks. This is from a top of J.B. Hook's restaurant, and you just can't have a better view than that. So go up there and visit them. Let's check out the uh, record high today in Springfield. 72 degrees broke the old record of 71. That was sent back in uh, 2004. By the way, uh, most of the other reporting stations across the area missed out by about two or three degrees. So very close to the number of communities across the Ozarks. Let's get a check of uh, what to expect this evening. Well, there'll be a little cloud cover out there. Temperatures will drop into the upper 50s by 8 p.m., 52 in the morning. But uh, tomorrow afternoon, I think it's going to be another nice day, becoming cloudy. Cloudy temperatures right around 71, and Steve, that puts us squarely back in record territory once again. It certainly does. All right. Thanks, Ron. Now to politics. Next stop, Arkansas for Marco Rubio right after South Carolina's primary. The Republican presidential hopeful will be in downtown Little Rock this Sunday. 
Donald Trump and Ted Cruz have already made stops in Arkansas ahead of the March 1st presidential primary, but Rubio has picked up more endorsements from Arkansas politicians. Missouri Senator Roy Blunt kicked off his re-election campaign with a two-day statewide tour. Springfield Republican announced his candidacy today, blasting President Obama as a weak world leader and vowing to vote against Obama's nominee to the Supreme Court. Blunt will likely face Missouri Secretary of State Jason Kander, who calls the senator and his family Washington insiders. The outcome of the November race and a handful of others will determine which party controls the Senate under a new president. Next here at 6, it's an application that can make a big difference in your child's college career. Where, where and how. And yep. how you can get help applying for federal student aid here in the Ozarks. Okay, and they were Christmas favorites, but later the new decision on the safety of hoverboards. Number one in the Ozarks. You're watching KY3 News at 6 with Lisa Rose, Steve Grant, Storm Team Meteorologist Ron Hurst, and Sports with Chad Klein. The place to be on air, online, on the go. The Republic Police Department no longer has a prescription drop box, as they're called. The decision came after the Nixa Police Department went into hazmat cleanup mode after a citizen disposed of a small bottle of cyanide recently. The next prescription drop-off is Saturday in Republic, uh, uh, April the 30th, at the Walgreens parking lot. Well, it can determine where your child goes to college and how much debt they will have when they graduate. We, of course, are talking about FAFSA, a free application for federal student aid. Contact KY3's Ashley Reynolds has the information on where you can get one-on-one -on -one help this weekend. Ashley? Stephen, Lisa, imagine if you could get a couple thousand bucks in just one hour, if you qualify. Well, that's what this is. There are millions of dollars designated for student aid. It's worth your time to see if you can pocket some of that. Many, many students are surprised to find uh, that they are actually eligible for quite a bit of financial aid, even if it's just a student loan that's low interest and might help them pay some of their balance to university. Becky Ahrens with Drury University says now is the time to fill out the paperwork. Don't wait until the April deadline. Many of those opportunities will go away. Plus, the later you wait in the year, the more students are thinking about financial aid and scholarships, so there are more applications for those scholarships later in the academic year, too. We chatted with some families on a campus tour. How many of you have filled out your federal student aid application? <laughs> Why'd you do it? Free money. Free money that sometimes you don't have to pay back. It's very important that students take the time to at least try. The paperwork can be intimidating. Help is on the way. Experts are hosting workshops for the next few weekends all across the Ozarks. Having people there that work in the profession can really allay some of those fears for students and parents. And those events start this weekend, and we have a list of those times and locations on our website. Just check out this story on the contact page. And if you go to one of these events, you'll need to bring your tax information and social security numbers for the parent and student. And if you can't make one of these frenzies, there are YouTube videos like this one right here behind me that can walk you through the entire process. We have a link to these two on ky3.com. But a word of caution, double check the site. You want the .gov not the dot com. You should never have to pay another company to fill out this free application, Lisa. Okay, kind of help that can make a big difference. Thanks, Ashley. A renewed consumer alert from the Internal Revenue Service, email and texting scams uh, surged a whopping 400% this year. There have been nearly 1,500 phishing and malware schemes reported in just the last two months. Scams are designed to trick taxpayers into thinking that they're official communications from the IRS or other people in the tax industry. Hoverboards, one of the holiday's most popular gifts, have been deemed unsafe by the federal government. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says put them away and is calling on all makers and sellers to voluntarily take them off the market until they're certified safe. So far, 52 reports of fires from the batteries causing $2 million in property damage. Mm. Well, another picture-perfect, beautiful day all over the Ozarks. Just how long will these spring-like temperatures last? Ron's in next with the answer in your full Storm Team forecast. And now, your KY3 Storm Team forecast. 
Well, welcome back for a look at the weather. What a beautiful day across the Ozarks. Record high temperature in Springfield again today. Today we actually broke the record as opposed to tie it yesterday. So let's get a look at what the weekend's going to look like. And Saturday's changed a little bit. Still, the uh, temperature's going to be approaching record territory in the afternoon, somewhere in the lower 70s. But we've had to kick up our chance for rain, especially in the late afternoon and evening hours as the boundary's going to get draped across the area. So our chance of rain has gone from 10% to about 30%. It's going to be a warm morning temperature starting off in the low 50s. Now on Sunday, because we're going to get the rain on Saturday and Saturday night, we've dropped our chance for rain on Sunday down to 20% or less, mainly down in northern Arkansas, and we ought to have a partly cloudy day. The problem is it's going to be a little cooler, but you know what? By February standards, a high temperature of 63, still well above the average temperature of 47 degrees. All right, let's check in on uh, weather watcher temperatures today. Just gorgeous across the entire area. In fact, coolest readings way out to the east, Mary Haney at uh, 65. Bonnie Valines down here on the mountain at uh, 68 down at Jasper. But everybody else was up in the low 70s. In fact, 71, as you can see, was a very popular number across the Ozarks today. We're up here at the SBU campus in Bolivar, kind of checking things out. The last few rays of sunlight there. Here in Springfield, they're calling it a clear sky, but there's a little cloud cover out there. 65 is our temperature. Humidity very low at 20%. And the winds today, nothing like yesterday's uh, gale force winds we had today. Uh, westerly at just 3 miles per hour. Uh, checking in our evening temperatures, so we're only going to gradually drop into low 50s. So if you're headed out tonight, a light jacket will suffice. Satellite picture showing that sunshine giving way to cloud cover, but then there's a little more clearing out there. But if we widen out, uh, well, there's this disturbance down here to the southwest. Now, it's going to drag the cloud cover in here first. When that boundary lifts back to the north that came through the area today, well, we're going to see an increase in humidity along with the temperature. So the combination of low-level moisture and this coming in from the west will help kick off those few scattered showers. So here's how the weather map looks uh, for late tomorrow afternoon. Stationary boundary to the north of the Ozarks. Here comes that moisture in the form of cloud cover, and a few scattered showers will break out of a, a ahead of a developing area of low pressure. Temperatures in the morning. Starting off pretty warm, upper 40s for our northern counties, mid 50s as you head south into Arkansas. By noon, uh, readings getting back into the upper 60s, and then we should manage to make it back into the low 70s in the afternoon. Again, just a beautiful day for February 20th. So our forecast set for tonight, uh, variable clouds across the area, 52 in Springfield, 56 degrees in northern Arkansas. Then for tomorrow, it's a mostly cloudy to cloudy day, a few scattered showers, mainly in southern Missouri. High temperatures up in the low 70s, south winds at 7 to 15, and the seven-day forecast. We already talked about Sunday, but again, a little cooler, a little more sunshine. And then high temperatures next week, still not very bad for uh, February. Readings uh, in the 40s and 50s. There is a slight chance for a few sprinkles or light showers on Tuesday. Otherwise, next week looks mostly dry. Lisa and Steve. All right, Ron, looking great until then. Felt like baseball weather, too, in the Ozarks. Perfect opening day for college baseball season. Chat updates us on the Bears, the Panthers, the Razorbacks, and the Tigers. Oh, yes. And we'll hear from the Cardinals' ace, who's ready for a huge year on the mound. Sports is next. Sports with Chad Plum starts now. Good evening, everybody. The MSU Lady Bears are in action as we speak in Carbondale. The Salukis with a two-point lead early on. Kelly Harper's ladies looking for a three-way tie right now in the Valley, hoping for big things on this final road trip of the year to pull out that championship. We'll have highlights at 9 and 10. The Baseball Bears ranked 17th in CollegiateBaseball.com, 25th in the USA Today. Get a huge win in their opener at Central Arkansas. Jake Burgers only hit a three-run homer. Local freshmen Hunter Steinmetz from Parkview and Jeremy Ironman from Warsaw were in the starting lineup for Missouri State. And Drury opens its season with a 9-2 loss to St. Edwards. The Hilltoppers put out uh, 12 hits to the Panthers, 5. Arkansas, meanwhile, ranks 22nd in the USA Today coaches poll. They were taking on Central Michigan. Eighth inning, the Hogs going to pick up four runs, capped off with a big hit from Jake Allridge. The triple is going to score two, and then Allridge is going to come home on an error. Arkansas goes on to win its opener, the final of 6-1. to one. And Mizzou starts the season with a strong outing from Reggie McLean, who throws a four-hit shutout through eight innings. McLean is 4-0 with a zero ERA in his career starts when it appears in a neutral ballpark. Meanwhile, down in Jupiter, a lot has been made about Jason Hayward's comments about the Cubs having a younger core of players. That's why he went to Chicago. Well, Cardinals ace Adam Wainwright didn't take it too well. He views the Cards pitching staff with Martinez, Waka, Leak as a young core ready to take over. 
these guys have got a whole career ahead of them. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, I think it's fair to say that the Cubs have a young nucleus and they're going to be there for a while. Uh, I also think it's fair to say we do too. Happening now online at OzarkSportsZone.com, the latest results of day two of the state wrestling tournament in Columbia. Here's just a brief look at some of the wrestlers who are still alive for individual championships. This is in class four and two's quarterfinals. You see at the bottom there, Broden LeMaster, he had a broken jaw earlier this year. He's still alive, though, for Reed's spring. And this weekend is the 58th running of the Great American Race. After missing last year's Daytona 500 with a leg injury, defending cup champion Kyle Busch is seeking his first Harley J. Earl trophy. Starts at the Daytona 500 in fourth position. That's the best we can do. That's fine with me. Uh, we'll be right behind our teammate Matt Kenseth, who's on the outside front row. So uh, JGR cars are, are faster here in single car speeds than we have been in years past. And so uh, that tends to lend itself to hopefully uh, a good race car for Sunday. And we'll have much more tonight at 9 and 10. Look forward to it. We'll be right back. NBC's Dateline examines the murder of a Springfield couple. Jan and Gary Terrell were found dead in their home back in 2014. You'll remember that's a story KY3 has covered from the beginning. The episode features the murder case, and it airs right here on KY3 Sunday night at 7 o'clock. We hope you've had a good week. Thanks for watching, and good night.